us, but not much ISP. In the Vasimir, you have a magnetic nozzle, and I want to point out that all these magnetic field lines close on themselves. So when you push something, and if the plasma were to contact the metal, the important problem is it would quench the plasma or chew away the metal. So when you push something out the back end, the recoil has to be felt against the magnetic field, and the magnetic field has to force its recoil against the metal parts. It's the metal parts that are your rocket. If there is dissipation of energy, and let me, right here, four little spherical magnets. And they're all arranged like you might see them in Vasimir in a string of little dipole magnets, like the magnets here that are forming the, uh, forming the, the coils here. When you've constrained these magnets and put them in a, in a copper tube, the magnetic field is constrained, and so they fall very slowly out of the copper tube. If you were to constrain these magnets and try to trap them so that you would say, okay, I'll bounce them, and in a short copper tube, they fall right in, not very slowly at all. The reason is this longer copper tube entrains more and more of the field flux and produces a, a, a drag on the particle as it comes down. If this were a superconductor, I would probably easily levitate these little magnets in the superconductor, but it's only copper. So the point of the matter is when I try and compress this magnetic field, there are sort of uh, dissipative mechanisms in getting the momentum back into the metal. And so you may not get as much thrust as you think. So that's another interesting issue. So Vasimir has a helicon discharge here, which produces most of, the ion most of the ionization. It has an ion cyclotron resonance heating antenna here, which tries to make sure that the thrust goes out the pipe. Ion cyclotron resonance heating, of course, all ions or electrons circulate in the magnetic field. The ICRH gets a, raw, gets a radio frequency wave in resonance with that circulation. And resonance heating is just that. It whips it around faster and faster at resonant frequency, resonating with the Larmor frequency at that part of the, of the magnet. And so it puts a lot of energy into the transverse temperature. This plasma is not in thermal equilibrium. It has two temperatures at least, all right, but for certain two. There's a longitudinal temperature or energy, there's transverse energy. The job of the ICRH is to pump energy into the transverse component. The job of the magnetic nozzle is to slowly move this energy into the longitudinal component because that's what makes thrust. This is a vector notion. This is the vo exhaust velocity in the axial direction. If you have effective velocities because mag magnetized plasma particles or neutral particles come out here and flow radially, all radial flow is, is momentum you've wasted. You can't get thrust out of it. So part of the issue about how to make sure all these things are done well is to, is to understand how this is, is to be integrated and, and, and uh, controlled. Okay. So, I'll, I'll, basically there are a lot of issues about the efficiency of this process. Mostly Vasimir has succeeded beautifully in, in being a plasma physics experiment. It is the inverse of a magnetic mirror. It is like ion cyclotron resonance heating for fusion, except it's done for a different reason. So all of that works, and, we've, and folks have learned a lot about this, but there are limitations in this process. There are losses in this process. There are losses about how you push on the field and then push on the motor. And so all these questions are sitting out there. And really quickly, one last thing. <clears throat> if you ask, what's the thrust to weight ratio? If I take a typical nuclear thermal rocket, thrust to weight ratio, and this is the weight including the reaction fission core in the nuclear thermal rocket, thrust to weight's about six, maybe five, seven, you know, in this drawing. Every design point I have found, and I wish there was someone here to stand for Vasimir to tell me I'm wrong, every design point I have found for Vasimir has a thrust to weight ratio bounded above by 2, 10 to the minus 3. Folks, if you walked into a used car dealer and he told you I have a car for you that has a million miles per gallon, 
but it will take you a week to get out of the parking lot. Would you buy that car? I rest my case. You're finished? Yeah. Right. Your turn. Okay, after this presentation, rather technical, I perhaps will rather give you the point of view as a um, leader of the French chapter of the Mars Society, that is the, the point of view on the, uh, on the communication, on the image of uh, this device and uh, of its impact on the agencies and on the public. Uh, in fact, as a population engineer, I was uh, very uh, attracted by the physics of this, this concept, which are very good, and I, I had the chance to visit uh, Chang Dia's labor laboratory in 2001 and was really impressed by the seriousness of the job, the work that was performed there. But in fact, uh, by visiting this lab, I, I saw only one part of the problem, and this is the important point in this affair. Uh, what I, sh I saw and what uh, Franklin Chan Diaz is working on is the engine itself and what has been shown by, by Robert uh, just now. But uh, the problem of this engine is that if you want the, it to be really efficient, that is to have it functioning at very high ISP, you need a very powerful uh, uh, power generator. You need much electricity, and in fact, uh, the efficiency is directly related to the power you are uh, able to deliver to this engine. And this is a problem because uh, to deliver this, uh, this energy, you need, in fact, a nuclear generator. Solar power is not a possibility because if you look, at, for instance, as, uh, at the ISS, the power is about 100 kilowatt. And here, if we look at uh, uh, possibility to, uh, to apply the Vazimir concept for Mars spacecraft, or say 50 tons or, some, or 100 tons, it is not 100 kilowatt unit, it's rather 100 megawatt, uh, a factor of, of uh, 1,000. So imagine uh, an array of pan solar panel 1,000 bigger than the, the space station, it's not applicable. So you need nuclear electric uh, generator. The technology, we, we know it. We can surely, surely uh, do that. But the problem is that uh, the specific power of such, such a generator is awfully great. What we, need, what we call specific power is uh, the mass per kilowatt, in kilogram per kilowatt delivered. And what we are able to do uh, to, with today technology is about 50 to 30 kilogram of mass per kilowatt delivered for the whole generator, that is the, the reactor, the nuclear reactor, the shield, the, tu the turbo alternator, and most of, of all, the radiator, because the problem of uh, generating electricity with a nuclear reactor in space is that you have not cold source, cold uh, dump on the earth. You use a, a river or the, the sea as a cold source of the machine. But in, in the space, you have to expel excess heat through radiators, which are very huge and very uh, massive. So if you have, for instance, even be optimistic, 10 uh, kilo per kilowatt for a generator, if you want two, uh, 200 megawatt, imagine that is that about uh, 2,000 tons of the generator. So there is really a, a, a problem. And the point is that this problem is not raised to, to, the, to the connaissance of the public of the agency. 
uh, uh, as it is presented today, it is